coming up. Bob and professional angler Paul Shibata find a little gem, a stocked little puddle lake deep in central Ontario. They deck out a little car topper John boat from Lund and fly fish this little treasure for acrobatic rainbow trout. It's a rainbow stacked show you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. Nice chunky fish, eh? That night. Good stuff. Oh, here we go. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get ready, get ready. Here it comes. Whoa, he's got it. <laughs> oh, man. That is a big rainbow. Oh, yeah. That thing is a monster. Look at that big laker. Look at the size of this fish. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. <laughs> Whoa, he's a jumper. That is awesome, girl. Look at that. Yeah. Woo, hooked up, boys. Whoa, all right. Here, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, oh no. Well, that's a nice one. All right, look at that. Hey, right. <laughs> Fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. That's what I call real fishing. Hey, today we're fishing on a small lake, and I'm here with Paul Shabata. And Paul, you know, across Ontario, there are so many small lakes that hold trout that don't get a lot of pressure, right? Absolutely. The Ministry of Action and Natural Resources have been stocking a lot of these little puddle lakes, as we call them, across Ontario. And you know, you talk to some of the old timers and they remember the old days about going to these little lakes and catching actually sizable rainbow trout especially, and that's what we're going to be fishing for today. Well, I met you through, uh, well, many years ago, and then of course got to know you better through the Renegade Bass Tournament Trail in Eastern Ontario. And uh, you know, we've had a chance to fish some of these small lakes. In fact, this lake we ice fished on it last winter had a lot of fun. Yep. Rainbow trout only in this lake, right? Absolutely, yes. Hmm. Thought I saw one rise out there. I'm not sure though, but we got a bit of a storm that's hopefully going to go around us today. What do you th what do you say we get out? Absolutely. Those are, I think a little bit smaller than the last one, but uh... oh, oh, there he goes. All right. Yeah. A little better acrobatic, this guy. Yeah. Yeah, is he going to come up again? He's going to come. Oh, maybe not. I think it is. It's going to it's going to go down and then definitely got some uh, some energy, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the fly rods we're using here. We're using G Loomis rods and and uh, you rigged up a couple just before we left uh left for the lake. What weight have we got on? Yeah, here? we're just fishing little lightweight fly rods here. We're just using five weight uh, uh, with floating lines. We're actually using, you know, some scientific anglers' weight forward fly lines here. And um, just because we're using relatively small flies, we don't need to catch huge distances and it's not too windy. Uh, unlike conventional bass tackle, you're casting the fly, uh, you're casting the fly line, pardon me, and the fly is just a hitchhiker. So because we're throwing relatively small flies, we don't need heavy lines, which makes it a lot more exciting. Okay, in a good fight out of this. All right. Now, you, you think it's pretty important to try to keep the fish in the water? Absolutely. Best. I mean, uh, one of my mentors when I was at Queens many years ago, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Bruce Tufts, who works so closely with Queens, uh, is a professor there, um, works closely with Shimano, rather. Um, had a paper about how it's so important to keep a rainbow trout especially underwater and out of water for no more than 60 seconds. And All he talked right. about the gills a little bit like um, a wet plastic bag. When it gets compressed and it's wet, mm -hmm. it's very, very, very hard to rehydrate. Let's see if we can get another one, Bob. So in other words, get them back. If you're, get, if you're doing catch release, now this is a put and take situation. These are stocked rainbows. So if you want to keep a few, it's not going to really hurt the population, obviously. No, not at all. Um, but certainly if you're catching and releasing, get them back into the water. Oh, baby. Good for you. That looks like a good one. All right. Excellent, Bob. All righty. 
I love it. Nicely done. All right. Oh, where's the Beckman? <laughs> That's called getting them in quick. All righty. Good stuff. Get that little net as a live well on the side of the boat works good, doesn't it? Works perfect. Look at that. All righty. Here we go. Oh, off he is. All right. Well done. Oh, another one just rose. Oh, I, sorry, nothing, Paul. The horizon over there? No. <laughs> well done. All right, thank you. Excellent. All right, well, let's catch some more. This, look, this is looking real good now. It's so flat. Sun's out, late afternoon, and life is good, Mr. Shibata. It's more fly fishing for rainbows when we come back. Stay tuned. Closed captioning is brought to you by BoaterExam.com. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Anyone who watches fishing shows is familiar with structure fishing. At times, it's all we talk about. Still, you have to admit, it has a lot of validity. Rocks, wood, transitions, and other features attract fish, particularly when they form a change in the surrounding topography. But is there too much of a good thing? It's surprising to see the number of anglers who bypass heavy structure fearing a permanent hang-up. Pile of rocks and boulders can be a threatening sight, but can also hold impressive fish. Skimming over the situation will keep you out of the snag zone and quite possibly out of the strike zone as well. When you go looking for trouble, there's a good chance you'll find it. In pressured lakes, fish look for the heaviest available cover. This smallmouth, for instance, is living the good life in a forest of trees. The same is true in rivers, where trout demand overhead protection. Some are more particular than others. Rainbows will venture into the open, while brown trout, like the one under the log, seldom stick their necks out. The best way to deal with heavy cover is to move in close and present bait in a near vertical drop using heavy tackle. And there are limits to what you can get away with. In this jungle of trees, just imagine trying to haul out one of these big Chinook salmon. Your fly was sinking down, wasn't it? Yeah. You weren't paying attention. No, I was, absolutely. Out of the corner of my eye, I was about to help you with something. I was paying attention, I saw the line just straighten out for a second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe that? All right, Paul. Good one? Yeah. Pretty good. They're all good. Is this like we're on Golden Pond? It seems like it. Oh, Henry, the loons. <laughs> Come on. Good stuff. Right here, while you're doing that, I'll just put this line back here, just in case there's one behind us. My dad always said, leave your bait in the oh, water. Well, it's just rising all over the place, Bob. Just like oh, you were talking about before, how you know the rain kind of went down on us and the sun came out, and in the evening it just started to go a little bit crazy. Oh, oh yeah. It's beautiful. Nice one. Oh, oh yeah, nice one. All righty. Yeah, it's got this small rubber-coated uh, net here made by Beckman, which is nice and easy on the fish, eh? You don't want to split those fins up too bad. Very sweet. Oh, yeah, look at that baby. Beauty. That's a fat one. Oh, yeah. Look at the stripe on this fish, too. Beautiful. Pretty, pretty, pretty fishing. Look at the stripe on it. Oops. Okay. Look at that. You got her? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Hey? Great fish. What do you think? Excellent. Isn't, oh, she is fat. Isn't that something? That's look at the beautiful fish. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All righty. Now let's put it back in here, and then we'll just let it swim right out. No problem. Nice. That one there, you know, it's funny how rainbows have all uh, different shades of 
of coloration, isn't it? Yeah. That one almost like purple on the side. Well, we got some rain coming in here, folks. So that's one of the things, uh, Paul, these, these big Ziploc bags are so handy for keeping things dry. Absolutely, I mean, we used to use garbage bags and stuff like that in the old days, but being able to seal them up and being able to see your contents on the inside makes it so easy, because sometimes you have multiple bags, and that one you got your tackle, and I got my rain suit in the other one. Uh, I think you got a big one for your lunch somewhere. <laughs> oh, and, uh, that is sarcastic. I don't use the XXLs for my lunch, just the XLs. And that just makes it easy. I think. Are we going to get a reprieve? Right, we might. You know what? I'm going to leave the raincoat off just to see. I'm going to pack this Columbia raincoat back in just because it's positive thinking, folks. And that's what I'm all about, the positive thinking of real fishing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Mr. Paul Shibata. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> when we come back, will Bob and Paul find that pot of gold and hook into a treasure of bountiful trout? Stay oh, tuned. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well done. <laughs> this tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. There are so many choices when it comes to fishing lines nowadays. You're talking about the standard monofilament that's been around for a long time, co-filament, you've got fluorocarbon, you've got fused lines, you've got braided lines. The fact is there are so many great options between you and the fish. Now, today I want to talk about marrying two of the best of both worlds together. Fluorocarbon is an incredibly great line because it's low stretch, but virtually disappears and is invisible under the water. So for clear water conditions, fish don't see it. Now, when it comes to no stretch type fishing line, you've got your uh, fuse line like Berkeley Fire Line, you've got spider wire, there are a number of braided or fuse lines that are available. What we like to do is take a spinning reel and we'll take a reel like this uh, Shimano and spool it up with eight or 10 pound test fire line or spider wire very thin diameter. You got to realize that those are incredibly thin diameter for the pound test that they are. So they cast a country mile. But what we'll do on the end of that is put a leader, maybe uh, three, four, five feet of a fluorocarbon line on the end. Now you're faced with deep water fishing. You want to get a good hook set, but it's clear water. Well, this combination will work as well. Whether you're casting making long casting clear water or deep water fishing. This is a really great combination. I've got a couple of pieces of string here, piece of white. Let's say this is your fluorocarbon leader and uh, let's use this green piece as uh, your main line. That's uh, your braided or fused line. Now, there's a knot that we use called a double uni knot that works really good for tying your leader to your main line. What we'll do is we'll take the two pieces of line and we'll overlap them and we'll take First of all, let's take the leader material and uh, we'll make a loop and we'll go around just a straight loop and we'll go around the two lines, oh, five or six times, okay? Five or six times. Now we'll hold that tag end, these two lines, and just pull it, okay? Now we've pulled those two together. Now you've got this line here, this is your main line. We'll do the same thing. We'll go around, so you're just making a circle and around through five or six times through the big loop. Hold the tag end, hold the other uni knot, it's the easiest. Pull it tight and then pull the two of them snugly together. And there you have it, a double uni knot. It's great for marrying both your braided or fused lines up with fluorocarbon. And what can I say? It's the best of both worlds. Hey, welcome back, folks. I'm here with Paul Shabata. And guess what we're fishing for? Rainbows. Just like up there. All righty. Well, hey, Paul, you know, the rain just blew through. We're a little wet, but not bad. I'm going to take off my, uh, my Columbia jacket. And what do you say we get over there to where the rainbows were hitting about a half hour ago? You should try and catch one. Well, I've had about six hits. 
but I'm trying to let you get a few just to make you feel good before I start putting up clinic on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just work our way over there. <laughs> All right, whoa, baby. <laughs> He's a runner, man. Boy, they fight hard, don't they? Know? Oh, yeah. Not Rainbows your fly so rods, strong. of course, to uh, the fish that you're fishing for, though. And these are five-weight Loomises, aren't they? Yep. We're, we're using two different uh, rods now. Let's talk a little bit now. The one I'm using is, is a GLX. Yeah, it's a Streamdance GLX. It's kind of our flagship trout rod. Um, it's been so well received. You mean north and south of the border throughout uh, South America as well, where they fish for a lot of these fish. Um, incredibly easy to cast with. It, it, it's a beautiful rod, so light. And of course, it's a pack rod too. A lot of these fly rods now that G. Loomis makes, if you're a traveler, you Absolutely. can pack these up in, what is that, about five pieces? No, that's a four piece, four piece, three section. What's interesting, Steve Rajeff, who designs these rods, uh, creates them so they have a perfect bend. I mean, the camera will show that up. There's no flat spots. And it's one thing that's very, very unique to Loomis is they're able to create that perfect bend because of the, the design of their ferrules. That's a nice fish, Bob. It is. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Well done. <laughs> right into the net. Good well stuff. done. You know, it, it, I guess I'm spoiled. I'm looking around. Oh, one just rose there. I cannot help but look around and not enjoy the moment, folks. Uh, I've got to just smell the roses for a second. Look at this beautiful rainbow I caught because they're rising all over. Some sort of hatch going on, isn't there? Though? Yeah. Yeah, like you talked about, you I mean you called it when the, when you knew that the the lake was going to calm down, the sun was going to come out, and traditionally they always tend to bite well just in the evening. That's a gorgeous fish. Oh, that beautiful fish. Sweet. Get her back in the water. Yeah, no problem. Good stuff. Way too cool. I don't know which way to cast. You know, a little John boat like this is really nice too for fishing on these smaller bodies of water because A, they're, you know, they're light. So you can take them either car topper on a trailer, um, even on a utility type trailer as opposed to a boat trailer. And, and just put on a little electric. We've got this little foot control uh, boat, bulldog. It's a motor guide. And it's meant actually to be on the bow like this or the transom. And then what is that? You've got a six horse. Six horse Mercury, mercury which, you know, made nice and light. Uh, the four stroke technology from Mercury has made them much, much lighter than they used to be. Uh, some of the four strokes at the beginning were a little bit bulky. Yeah. But this one's nice and easy. We'll be right back fishing small lakes for rainbow trout. I think he just realized. It was hooked. We're not counting. This is not competition. This is enjoyment of camaraderie and friendship. Then why have you been blocking me from all the rises? <laughs> These guys are pretty good. This thing's got attitude. Oh, yeah. Nice fish, Bob. Alrighty. Look at that. These are so much fun, aren't they? Ooh, there you go. Well done. Very sweet. All right, Paul, you got one, brother. Yeah. Once again, just a little dimple on the surface, and it's almost like you're you're sight fishing. So you're gonna want a net on this one? Oh! Nice. Nice. Oh, baby. Yeah, these fish are so strong. And you're using little five weight Loomis rods. Um, it's awesome. So, this one's feisty, is it? Mm hmm. Kind of average with the size we've been getting, which have all been nice. I mean, and you look at the size of these fish, they're all feeding pretty good, eh, Bob? Absolutely. Ooh. You know, it's amazing that they can get as big as they get in a year or two, just feeding on, you know, all kinds of little bugs, insects, hatches. I guess minnows, too. I'm not sure how much, how many minnows are being a, 
in a lake like this. You think quite a few? Yeah, yeah. There is actually quite a large forage base. I fished in this little lake. And, and the neat thing I like about this kind of stuff is that, I mean, these a lot of little lakes across Ontario, across Canada for that matter, where trout like this, they're accessible. And, and you know, you don't have to have a big boat as you can see from today. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to spend a pile of money coming here, but you could have a great day. Well, the way this boat is rigged up. Yeah, this is a machine. You got a gas engine, a nice molten mercury on the back. And got that bulldog. That bulldog's a good deal, eh? Yeah, we got power on both ends. Just going to back us up a hair. I got my foot on the pedal here, so. All right. Good stuff. All right. I think he just realized it was hooked. Look at that. Nice chunky fish, Isn't eh? Isn't that nice? Good stuff. Good stuff, well done. Paul. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, folks, if you're looking for a lot of fun, just get out on these small lakes. You know, a lot of the Ministry of Natural Resources uh, offices will have records of some of the lakes they stock with brook trout, rainbow trout. Yeah, some of the best fishermen, in fact, routinely on an annual basis try and get those stocking reports. And the Ministry put those fish in those bodies of water for people to, in fact, actually use. And like today, sometimes they cooperate. Well, shall we mosey on back to the launch? It's been a great day. Yeah, awesome. Left-hander. <laughs> kind of a lefty type of guy. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs> yeah.